I am Kim Kimball and this is how I made it. I'm a third generation hairstylist, so I knew because, my, you know, growing up in the salon with my mom and my grandmother that I was going to do hair. When I also fell in love with the whole fashion scene when Lily Smith and Patrick Kelly was, you know, the you know African American uh, designers, I wanted to be like them. It wasn't until I started going to hair shows and seeing these, you know, platform artists, as they call them, hairstylists, on stage presenting, you know, hairstyles, educating, flipping their shears. When I saw that, that let me know, oh, I've got to do this. You know, and, and also as I was doing clients and I would watch them transform from one way to excited and happy, it was a feel good moment for me and it made me, you know, really, really take on the love of cosmetology. So around the time that I started working on BAPS, I had just opened a salon and I had built my clientele to, a, you know, a nice large clientele. The challenge was working in TV and film you know, it's usually a five day a week gig, so I'd have to try to do my clients on the weekends. So for a while I was able to maintain a lot of clients on the weekends, and then of course I would, you know, send some of my clients to other people because this was something I really wanted to pursue. So it was very challenging, but after a while, I, you, know, I, you know, I had to lessen my clientele or give them to other stylists in the salon. And I, I actually, started building a celebrity clientele at that time. But I still even had, you know, I've always, even today, still have clients that I do. A lot of my clients have built up to mostly celebrities because I work with them a lot on different projects. So they also come, you know, they're also my clients as well. Because I don't get to, I'm not in the salon as much as I used to be because the freelance and the television and film take me out of the salon a lot. But I, my first love was working in the salon, so I always have to kind of find a way to get back into the salon. I think it keeps me, you know, in the, you know, grounded and in the know of what's going on, you know, working with other stylists, seeing, you know, seeing what's out there. I did a lot of Beyonce's L'Oreal hair color campaigns. I love hair color. Um, so that was, you know, a great project for me. Recently, I just did her video Glow, Pretty Hurts, Haunted, and Superpower. And I've worked with her for like 14 years. I've been uh, one of her main stylists for, yes, 14 years since Crazy in Love. Like, that's when she really started hiring me a lot uh, to do videos and magazine covers. And um, She's an amazing artist. Um, I love working with her because she's very innovative and creative. First and foremost, I, mean, I love working with her. Mary J. Blige is one, is an amazing artist to work with. I had always wanted to work with her and I got the opportunity to work with her and um, and actually still work with her. She's a, you know, a pretty consistent client for me. Uh, but you know, I really admire her, her strength, um, what she's been through. Yeah, she's inspiring and talented. Uh, also work with me, um, Whitney Houston, that um, sparkle on that film, and I did her last album packaging. And I have to say, she's probably one of my great memorable moments uh, of working with a celebrity. Uh, you know, when we did Sparkle, you know, first doing the album packaging was great, you know, and I, I wanted to give her a style that was like more off her face. That was like my whole goal, and that, you know, I was grateful that she was allowed me and trusted my creativity to do that. But it was Sparkle that I have the best memories because, you know, she would come in every day uh, in the trailer and she played gospel music and we listened to gospel music. And, you know, I was grateful that she, you know, she had to approve me to be hired on that film. And, uh, you know, it was just a great memory. So it was very uh, difficult because, you know, she passed shortly after that. So it was very difficult because we had such an amazing time. And she even asked me to work with her on her next project. She was going to do Wait and Exhale too. I was excited about that, you know, but I have to say that'll be something, a memory that I'll take, cherish, you know, forever because, you know, growing up, I was a huge fan of Whitney Houston. She's probably one of the greatest voices, you know, ever, you know, and that was, so that was an honor for me. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is uh, not to rush too fast into things. Definitely want to move, can have consistent move, but if again, if you don't plan, 
you can just jump in and sometimes you can set yourself up for failure. Also, be a good decision maker. Uh, sometimes if you waver in your decisions or you flip-flopping your decisions, it can come back to haunt you, you know? Uh, it's like your plan and I'm sticking to it or my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> you have to be that way uh, in, in, in business and, and when you're, you know, because there's always going to be a decision to make and you got to be, you know, definitely think about your decisions, but you got to definitely make one. And so when you're branding yourself, you got to understand what your brand is and everything has to go back to that, that vision of what you want. So when I did the show, I, I know how I wanted to be perceived you know, the entire show. So I constantly work on this is how I want to be perceived. This is this because this is how I want my brain to be built. Just stay focused and go back to what it is that you want to say.